Okay, so I've had my Raspberry Pi 5 now for a couple of months and uh, it's working great for me, really love it. I thought I'd share some of the knowledge that I've gained from using it and also from using the Pi 4 in the past uh, and things you might need if you've ordered one, things that it's worth getting hold of before your Pi 5 arrives. The first thing I think worth mentioning is pretty much nothing works uh, and that's compared to the Pi 4 which has been out for four years now. Uh, which has so many different operating systems, so many different emulators, uh, all sorts of add-ons and things like that. This is a new system, so always what happens, uh, especially as a lot of developers haven't had their hands on a Pi 5, the software isn't ready because it's different architecture, it needs adapting. If you want to see what does work on a Raspberry Pi 4 to give you an idea of what in the future will work on a Raspberry Pi 5, have a look at this video. I've gone through all sorts of things uh, worth knowing when getting a Raspberry Pi uh, and showing what sort of systems work with it, operating systems, games, things like that. But now remember that we've got two to three times the power, which is huge. So things will really start happening on the Raspberry Pi 5 over the next couple of months. Uh, you know, expect to get Android builds, Windows builds, uh, all sorts of different Linux builds, really impressive emulation, just loads of add-ons and things like that as well. Operating systems that do work at the moment, we've got Raspberry Pi OS, which is the official operating system, which is working really well. Uh, we've got Ubuntu, which is great as well. Uh, I'm especially pleased with the PS2 emulation on Ubuntu. Uh, and also Recallbox, uh, which is based on RetroArch, so like RetroPie, it's all your retro games. And pretty much everything from PlayStation and before seems to be working all right on that. Um, but if you go through Raspberry Pi OS or Ubuntu, you can get GameCube, Wii, PS2, uh, and there'll be more coming in the future. Next up, power supply. So the Raspberry Pi 5, being a more powerful device, requires more power. Now, there is an official Raspberry Pi power supply, which I still haven't got yet. But if you plan to overclock, or if you plan to plug in lots of things that draw power from the Pi, you're really going to need this 27 watt USB-C power supply. Now the thing that's different about this is uh, if we look at previous power supplies, so we've got a 12.5 watt uh, and we've also got a 15 watt. So these are all 5 volt power supplies, but the Raspberry Pi 4 power supply, which I've been using for two months and has been absolutely fine. So here's a white one and here's a black one. This is the one operating my Pi 5 at the moment. Uh, and as you can see, it's drawing 3.3 watts, and it's capable of up to 15 watts. And I've got all I've got plugged in is my uh, mouse and keyboard adapter. I've got an SD card in there, HDMI going out to the monitor, and I've got an Ethernet cable. And obviously, you can see I've got a fan here. This is running at 3 volts because I like it to be quieter. Uh, I'm not overclocking, and the temperature stays lovely and low. But even if I play a YouTube video. So if I click play now and go full screen at 1080 and then you see it ramps up a bit but it's still well within the limits. You could plug a USB stick in there, uh, you could plug in a controller and you'd still be alright with this power supply. But if you can, if you haven't already ordered a power supply, get the official one. It will be much better for future use of the Raspberry Pi. Now you might think you've already got a power supply which has this sort of watts or more and says that it's capable of 5 amps or maybe in more than 5 amps. For instance, this power supply from my MacBook Air, uh, if we zoom into it, you can see that it's 30 watts, but actually at 20 volts it's 1.5 amp, at 15 volts it's 2 amp, at 9 volts it's 3 amp, uh, and at 5 volts it's 3 amp. So it's pretty much the same as an official Raspberry Pi 4 power adapter. Uh, there are a few 5 volt 5 amp adapters in there but it's not a standard and USB-C normally only supports up to 3 amps with 5 volts so again I would get the official adapter it's just going to be more straightforward in the long run. Now the Pi is different to a lot of computers in the way that it doesn't come with any onboard storage at all and uh, I'm using it from a micro SD card at the moment. Micro SD cards generally are really quite inexpensive so you can often get 32 gig cards like this uh, Adroit Lark, like the Keoxia, uh, like uh, the Brave Eagle that I'm using in here at the moment, the Alert Seal. They're all pretty, pretty inexpensive SD cards. But if you buy two or three 32 gig ones, you can experiment with operating systems. Obviously, if you plan to do a lot of 
um, retro pi and things like that then you might want to go up to 64 gig or 128 gig probably wouldn't go much higher than that on an SD card but it depends what you want to do with it some of the retro pi builds on the pi 4 were massive so you know 512 or more gigabytes um, but it depends what you're using but for a Linux operating system for trying things out for experimenting it's great because you can literally just turn it off put a different SD card in turn it on you've got a different operating system and I really like that but I would say it's probably worth having at least 128 gig uh, for your main operating system so you'd probably use Raspberry Pi OS on this and that would enable you to download any other operating systems or about write them to an SD card back up the operating system on that on that uh, main 128 gig USB stick or SD card uh, and then you can write it to another SD card so it just gives you loads of flexibility I'll put links in the description to a lot of the more inexpensive ones my favorite one uh, which is this one here uh, it is a really good SD card really good speeds from it. it's been really reliable for me I'm uh, I'm super happy with it we haven't yet got access to the PCIe slot here uh, which will give us a faster access to our drives. Uh, it supports PCI 2, but uh, apparently can go up to PCI 3. Uh, Jeff Ginning showed in one of his videos. Now, I use a USB stick sometimes because they're faster than most SD cards, although most USB sticks are slower at running an operating system because you want good random read and write speeds. I really like SSD drives because they're pretty inexpensive, very reliable, uh, and you can get some really nice big sizes for not loads of money and this is a, a USB SATA cable so you just plug it into the USB 3 socket and also things like the Argon 1 adapter which just gives me the option to be able to use an M.2 drive with USB 3 but there will definitely be some more solutions for this PCIe slot in the future so how are you going to get your operating system onto a micro SD card or a USB stick well, let's just shut this down unplug my SD card and then press the little power button to start it up and I'll show you what happens on a Raspberry Pi 5. So not a lot really, it shows you it's a Raspberry Pi 5 Model B, uh, it tells you how many gigs of RAM it's got, it also tries to boot from an SD card or USB but obviously we have no operating system at the moment and you can see at the top there is a QR code on the right hand side. If we point our camera at it we can click on raspberrypi.com and you can see that it takes you to a link to install using Raspberry Pi Imager which is available for Windows, Mac OS and also Ubuntu or other Linux systems. The Pi 4 is way cooler on this front so if I switch it on if there's no media present we get this screen so if we press and hold shift to start net install you can see it says install an OS on this Raspberry Pi if not done so already insert an Ethernet cable so I can plug in my network connection and it downloads Raspberry Pi Imager to the RAM of the device. I'm told they're working on it for the Pi 5 but it's not ready yet. Okay, it's just finished downloading, it's just starting the installer and that enables you to choose your OS from the big long list. Excellent. Next up, the connection to your monitor is micro HDMI which is a lot smaller than the standard HDMI so you can either get a cable that is HDMI to micro or you can get one of these adapters which is what I use which is micro HDMI on one end and then we've got an HDMI socket on the other so we can use it with the existing HDMI cable and pretty much any HDMI cable will be fine with this adapter some people aren't very happy that we don't have an analog audio connection on the Pi 5 uh, but you can get USB sound cards which work with pretty much every operating system which give you a headphone out and microphone input. These are pretty inexpensive if you really need one. Obviously it's got Bluetooth so if you're using it with Raspberry Pi OS and you've got any Bluetooth speakers nearby or an Alexa speaker or something like that, you can connect to that. And the last thing is subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have playlists on Raspberry Pi News and also Raspberry Pi OS uh, with over 650 videos uh, so you should be able to find the answer in there I'll definitely be still making new videos on Raspberry Pi 5 you can see I've done a load recently uh, I've really been getting excited about this new release it is so impressive okay so I hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe